this is far from being a responsible society. And my suggestion to this group this afternoon is that what we need is a responsible society. A responsible society is not a paternalistic society. It is a society that is guided in its decision making by values that affirm the humanity of its members. It is a society controlled by a sense of moral accountability at all levels. It is a society in which all policies pursued and the state of the society itself are morally accounted for by the appropriate and relevant persons and ultimately by the whole community. It is a society in which all this is grounded on and shared by a vision, a communal vision of what we ought to be. What is this responsible society? A central feature of the shared vision of this responsible society is what I would call the common good. In a responsible society, the common good is not sacrificed on the altar of narrow self-interest. Neither is self-interest itself totally subsumed by the common good. It is to see people exercising a freedom, not only for self, but one which also seeks the well-being of others, best summed up in the common good. In this case, self-interest, and could I ask you to bear this in mind, there is a place for self-interest, but self-interest ought to take certain things into consideration. One, service. Two, the rights of others. Three, community solidarity. And all of these are for the achievement of the common good and the establishment of the responsible society. When we talk about the common good, it is not a concept that everybody accepts because the concept of the common good can be used in dubious ways to put individuals at very serious disadvantage, specifically in the service of vested interests. It can be manipulated with seeming moral passion by the powers that be, or by interest groups, denying people their legitimate rights, establishing repressive measures to silence protests, or forcing people to conform to harsh rules in the name of the common good. But when you examine the common good, it is no more than narrow group interest. This is the kind of thing that national security states are made of. This is the kind of thing that sustains tyrannical rulers. This is the kind of thing that gives minority interest vast powers. And sometimes when you have a strike and you hear how many millions are being lost per minute some, in the name of the national interest, you need also to examine whether this is really true. The danger does exist for the common good to be exploited. Indeed, if the concept is properly understood, it will prevent the distortions and exploitations. But I am convinced there is no alternative concept that can take the place of the common good. And the concept of the common good reminds Jamaicans that society is not simply a mass of individuals thrown together and who are meant to live doing as they see fit with no reference to anything else but their own desires and wishes. There is an interrelatedness that goes much deeper than this and warrants the expression of a social existence that we here call the responsible society. And as we do this, I beg our society to recover the concept of citizenship. We need to re rediscover and appreciate citizenship. For the common good 
is put into proper perspective when we rediscover citizenship. Where there is citizenship, there will be concepts of equality and solidarity, protection and participation, rights and duties, and all of these are essential. A terrible problem that we face now is that too often citizenship tends to be a matter of form without content, shadow without substance. Too many persons in our society tend to be more aware of and concerned about their rights than their duties. There are those who seem able to secure their rights rather than to do their duties. And there are those who seem to be in a large number who have no power and they have no enabling to experience and achieve their rights. But it is woefully easy to impose their duties upon them. There are the strong and the weak in our society, the privileged and the marginalized, 